구분해내는 것이 노하우이자 기술이다. 가죽을 자를 때도 특별한 장인만의 전용 도구가 사용된다. Bueno, todos los cortadores usamos lo que es el fleje, que es cuchilla o cola de reloj. Entonces, pues hacemos lo que es el corte de la, de lo que es el aparato de la cuchilla y con la lima. 그는 시계 태엽을 만드는 재료를 직접 갈고 날카롭게 만들어 가죽 칼로 사용하고 있다. 이렇게 만든 칼은 유연하기 때문에 비싼 가죽에 상처를 남기지 않고 곡선 부분까지도 거침없이 재단이 가능하다. Hello guys, this is Reltus. So I have this um, clock spring and I'm going to turn it into a blade. So uh, these are the, if you saw already the previous clips, these are um, clock springs but they can be turned into a knife so let me cut them apart so. 오케이 that was very strong yeah so they are spring indeed yep <laughs> and about this one as well. I need to carefully cut them. Hmm. Need a different container, I think. All right. So I brought this big container. I'll put this inside this bucket, and I'll cut them open here. All right. Okay, they are indeed open now. Okay, so let's see. All right, so this one has thinner spring. This one has a thicker spring, but we'll cut them in size. And I think I will cut them into See, can I get three blades out of this spring? It's fairly long. Um, okay, I can see that the heat treatment line ends here. So I'll just cut them out here like this. Yep. And then, yeah, I'll, I'll not just make it too, too long. I will just measure this long short then I will just think okay this this much is let me let's cut it in angle so that we can use it as a blade on both sides mm -hmm. all right so like this oh it's hard to cut Okay. So I will have to first cut in the cut in this direction now. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, maybe the longest I should maybe cut it. Okay, I'll I'll cut it like here. All falling apart. Alright, I'll pick that up later. And also this one no cut. This one is more curvy. But doesn't matter. Because it will be used 
like this mud this way. Alright, so <clears throat> compare this plate. So I'll cut about here. It all fell apart. I'll pick that up now. Alright, so you have the spring ends, which we don't need. This one, okay. And we have some leftover spring, but let's keep it like this uh, for future project, maybe. And we have three blades from thinner stock one, and we have the thicker stock, more curved one. So yeah, I'll have to see how I um, turn these into blades and I'll show you the process. So this is the thin stock one and uh, you can see these two lines. That was the, um, my, I, I attempted, I tried to cut this with this um, plier but I couldn't cut so I'll try this again. very difficult to cut. I think I have to file it down maybe. Hmm. Okay, it cuts very well on this um, small narrow section, but um, it's difficult to cut into this angle. So from this point I will just try to file it away. Alright, so let's file this. Uh, like I showed you previously, we, I tried to cut it with the cutter but that didn't work. So. I'll just try to file it as uh, as this line is a reference with a file. So the angle of this um, cut will not be so important at this moment. Now I'll just try to make the things into a map shape. So I know this is very springy metal, so it might not take the file well, but we'll see. Okay. As you saw, see this thing is too springy. It's not, it's, my energy is dissipating with this motion. So I'll just try to cut it with a cutter, um, like an angle grinder, a small angle grinder, like a Dremel. I'll just cut it into a knife shape. Sandpaper first. So I'll take first. I will use 300 sandpaper, 330, 20 grits. So I will have to place it in the indispensable holder. This is quite straight blade. Just 
here is quite thin and uh, it's easy to sharpen on the same paper. The sandpapers can be um, can be higher grit if you use it constantly, constantly like this. So what I mean is that um, for uh, for shaping steel, for example, uh, this three hundred grit sandpaper, as the sandpaper wears out, like the, the region here, it's finer now because the older sharp grits are now um, crumbled. So. It's a high grit now, so let's say it's around 400 and some other places now it's 500 grits. Um, sandpapers are like that. Um, it loses its grit quite relatively quickly than uh, sharpening stone. So if you use it over and over on the same spot, uh, you will have a higher grit, which is um, you get polished edge. And also the edge will get um, much harder because uh, it's not so much... Uh, Material removal is more of a friction. Yeah, so let's do it like this. So let's let's just say that we can sharpen the edge so easily like this, and then finish the last drop. This is two millimeter thick. Okay, it's not sharp, so I think I need to sharpen it definitely. So let me try to sharpen it on the sandpaper again. I'll bring out much coarse sandpaper with a topper backing. I will send with I will sharpen with the hundred grit.
the problem with this knife is actually um, the edge flexes too much I think uh, this is way too much uh, flex maybe I can just t uh, shorten it a little bit the edge is not still sharp and uh, need to shorten it a little bit Let's see if I can use it. Yeah, it's much better, but then the edge is not sharp. Maybe I should sharpen it with a um, sharpening stone off the camera. So I have sharpened it with a sharpening stone also. Now I try to cut, and uh, the result is not that good. I mean, you can try to cut your leather almost in half. But um, it doesn't really cut into leather that well. So it's just only the surface level and it's just a uh, wooden cut. Like I said, uh, like I showed you the earlier in the beginning of the video, uh, the guy sharpened it with the file, which has, um, it had the tendency to sharpen much uh, much better than this steel. Uh, I tried to sharpen it also with file, but uh, the the steel doesn't really get filed easily like that you see uh, in, the, in the beginning of the video. So I think it's a different type of steel because it, even though it's the same spring steel, there are many different kinds of um, spring steel and some are suitable for knives, some are not suitable for knives. And uh, I'm not sure which uh, uh, still they used uh, for this type of uh, springs they both uh, looked a bit different and one looked much similar than the other uh, one in the video and I think the still doesn't behave exactly the same as the the guy used in the video and also um, maybe it has the cutting ability has a tendency to how um, how many how how toothy it gets instead of um, shiny uh, polished edge like I normally get used to so I want to call this as a fail because it doesn't really cut leather and maybe if I do further investigation or if I do the different heat treating if I do the additional heat treating for these steels and then maybe if I may have a better result but then if I do so much work on this steel that would it, uh, that would uh, lose its purpose so so this is my experience with um, clock spring steel to use as um, the blade for the indispensable. It didn't work as the, the video that I showed you earlier, but then it was kind of fun experiment and uh, I always want to try what it's like and um, what if it's, if it's good or better or worse or something. And uh, I've seen it now, so I have um, solved my curiosity. Alright, so thanks for watching guys as always and I will see you guys next video. Bye bye.